Another much appreciated bush rodent is the chrysotome, formerly known under the name of the giant rat or rat de Gambi, Gambian rat. Its scientific name is Chrysotomis. Dr. Kobinar from Ghana tells us about it. Forest sustainability actually means that every component of the forest should be protected. People have already bred chrysotomes in several villages, and this metallic cage is perfect for carrying them. These animals are very tame and docile, therefore you may let them move about on their cage simply by holding their tails. A chrysotome breeder lives on this hill in Cameroon. A small cage is enough for several chrysotome, which tend to their own needs, eat and clean themselves. Elsewhere in a Benin village, people are waiting for the person in charge of the animals. Surprisingly, a simple earthenware pot is used as a nest or a resting place by a chrysotome, which appears at ease and hardly wakes up when disturbed. As with many rodents, this animal is very clever on its forefeet. Here you can see a mother and her young and there's no problem to take them in your hands. The market is an ideal place to sell these animals. Outside Cotonou in Benin, these baked or smoked pieces of chrysotome sell well. One is impressed by the abundance of the small animal meat in bowls or on trays, which readily demonstrates that mini livestock is useful and profitable. Simple techniques can facilitate making the catch. Cone-shaped nets fastened to a handle can be used. Once the animal has been caught, it's killed, cleaned, dressed, and the remaining hairs are burned off. Meanwhile, salt has been crushed with spices to impregnate the carcasses. Sawdust is then thrown on the glowing embers of the fireplace. And this one is put into a smoking room. The two carcasses will be hung in here. And then the doors are closed. Afterwards, everybody goes back to work. And sometimes later, the carcasses are ready. Sometimes you can find them in a restaurant. And some of these restaurants are very well known for their chrysotome courses or a la carte meat. Some breeders have their products brought there, and once the usual transactions are made, the cook can start getting to work. Sometime later, the waiter brings the dishes in and the guests will have a delicious meal.
The so-called tong, with its pointed nose, looks like a hedgehog. Remarkably, this animal can have up to 32 fetuses. About a dozen young will be born, but only three to five will survive. Originating in Madagascar, it was exported to the neighboring islands, namely to Mauritius and the Reunion, where it adapted to the forest environment. A farm owner now explains to us how he hunts, or rather poaches. Thanks to an ordinary stick, he blocks the tenrec's hole to force it to move out. When the tenrec passes along the hole, it'll move the stick, so we know it's under the stick. A man has been living in the plain called Plain des Palmistes for several months. His name is Jean-Claude Tevenet. He has a passion he wants to share with the others, tong breeding and its consumption. A small animal which is a family member of the hedgehog, it comes from Madagascar and scientists know it as Tenrec echodatus. Tenrec meat is much appreciated in the islands of Reunion. Before consumption of tenrec meat, the pieces are cut and prepared according to the local gastronomy rules and becomes a delicious dish. This market on the Ivory Coast is very lively, like everywhere in Africa. And it doesn't take long to notice the saleswoman with their giant snails. The ones we can see here are ashatine, which have rather pointed shells. The bags are emptied and the biggest animals are put in a prominent position to attract customers. Some of these snails have been bred and some snaileries are very simple as they're protected by vegetation, as here, covering the roof and the partitions in order to keep a high degree of humidity. You can also use other types of snaileries with very good results. As soon as they're hatched, the young have a shell and are self-sufficient. They're adults in miniature. In Ghana, Dr. Kobinard tells us what is done there. The Forestry Research Institute of Ghana is interested in snail farming because we believe snails are an integral part of the forest ecosystem. Snaileries can also be set up outside, but they have to be protected with shade during some periods of the year. It's even important to water the breeding substratums. In Cameroon, snails that are bred feed successfully on agricultural or food waste. Snails also eat lettuce, which can no longer be sold. At markets, another product useful for raising snails, like kaolin, can be found. In each country and in each area, you'll find typical snail breeding techniques. Ghana is also developing its food production. Dr. Teti makes the official position clear. Concerning the snail meat sold on the traditional markets, we have also identified problems with the, the processing and storage. And we have suggested the following recommendations. First, that the snail meat must be boiled before extrusion from the shells. Second, they must be washed with water and then with vinegar to remove the slime. And then thirdly, they must be dried using the solar dryer. 
In some places, saleswomen take the snail flesh out of their shells. The meat is prepared and cooked, and you can enjoy a delicious kebab in a small Cameronese restaurant. In Ghana, you can also see a factory that preserves ashatine meat. The tins are sterilized and crimped with a machine. The tins are then labeled as giant snails. In Europe, supermarkets sell more or less prepared dishes. Snails without shells as well as snails with shells and garlic butter can be found. However, if you read the labels carefully, you'll sometimes find that the container has African giant snail meat inside since ashatines are clearly mentioned. These tasty white worms are palm tree grubs from Guinea. But these two men went in search of them in a forest in Cameroon. These trees can be used in two ways. You can cut the stems or let the trees bleed to gather the sap and make wine. Later, the trunk will rot away and fatten the larvae. On decaying palm trees, only one or two layers have to be taken out in order to gather living and fat larvae. Sometimes adult insects can be found, but larvae are more sought after, and some people don't hesitate to eat them alive once their heads have been cut off. In this other palm tree, it was only necessary to take out a trunk layer to find larvae. These are yellow. They're even more delicious after having been cooked in a light preparation in boiling oil. These children are really enjoying eating them. The preparation of other palm grubs benefit from the art of cooking transmitted by generations of Africans, as enjoyed here by this family in Cameroon. Recently, some have tried to breed larvae in dead palm trees.